save a third save file here. Is it taking me back to the intro? Yeah, it is. Okay, yeah, that's a really... That's incredibly, uh... It's incredibly unsatisfying. Like, I much prefer the ending in Persona 4 and 5 by, like, a fairly wide margin. We still have to play the answer. I'm doing this by... I'm opening up the config screen so that it doesn't start playing, uh... The intro scene or anything like that. But, uh... Michael, just... You may as well just stop talking to me, Michael. Michael's just going in that he, like, loves Persona 3 way more and all that. Dude, you're welcome to your opinion, but I highly disagree. That that ending was very uh, disappointing to me. And saying I find it better than just go home? Like, Michael, for someone who says he loves Persona 5 so much, to call the ending of Persona 5 just go home, I'm actually, like, disappointing in you. Disappointed in you. That you would call Persona 5's ending just go home. That's like, come on, man. Come on. But, uh, if you like the ending of 3, that's fine. I'm just saying for me personally, I'm not saying it's like the worst thing I've ever seen in video games or anything crazy like that. I am saying I like the ending in 4 and 5 better, and this does feel very, like, kind of unsatisfying to just have it end right there. Also, as I said before, I'm never a fan of a story ending on, like, a character death or a sad note. I'm totally fine with characters like, uh, I always go to Naruto because it's my favorite anime, so sorry that I always use this example. Like, Jiraiya and Itachi die of spoilers. Dying in Naruto, really sad moments. I thought they were done great, really good and all that. Shinji dying in this game, I felt like was kind of a waste of his character and could have been done better, but Shinji dying, I was still cool for. So that's fine. But, like, to end the story on something that isn't, like... I like it when it ends on a happy note, basically. After I've gone through so much with so many characters and all, I want it to end on a happy note. I don't like it when games end on really sad notes. I just don't. It's just a personal thing. I just really don't. The theme of this game is death? Okay. What is that supposed to mean? Like, I don't care? Just because... People say this all the time to me. When I say I don't like something, it's like, Oh, but that's what the theme, or that's what it's meant to be. Or whatever. So what? That doesn't mean I have to like it just because it fits its theme. That just means I don't like the theme or that it followed that theme. So, you know, the end. Like, I, you can sit there and say, like, well, Memento Mori, the theme of the game is death. I don't care. That doesn't mean anything to me. I still don't like it, regardless. But uh, I'm not. I'm not sitting here. My playthroughs aren't for me to critique the game on an objective uh, level as like a reviewer for a company or something. I'm saying my feelings of the game, and I don't like that ending very much. I I really don't. It's uh, I'm not a fan at all. But uh, yeah, I guess I should talk about the rest of the game. We do need to do the answer, but chat has told me the answer is, like, a kind of a weird separate thing from Persona. Like, it's still part of Persona, but isn't, like, super... It's, it's weird, I guess, from what I've been getting from chat. And I can only assume that you don't play as Minato, because Minato is dead! But, uh... But, yeah, anyways. The ending is it's not terrible. And, I mean, I guess it does fit the theme of the game, but I don't like it <laughs> I, I don't really care if games m match their themes and same thing for like animes or other media I don't care if it matches its themes and etc and whatnot if I don't like that what it matches so I, I just I don't like it sorry um as a game like as a, like an actual playable game I think I like Persona 3 more than Persona 4 I definitely like... Because I was looking... I My opinion of Persona 4 has really soured since I did my playthrough of it. I like Persona 4 a lot less than when I originally played it. Looking back on it, and I tried to do an NG Plus of Persona 4, and I honestly just couldn't get through NG Plus in the game. I got through, like, three dungeons, and then I was so bored I stopped. But, um... Not to say that Persona 4 is a bad game, but I just want to preface it by saying my opinion of Persona 4 has drastically fallen from what it used to be when I first played the game. And also since I played Persona 5 The Royal. Um, because Persona 5 The Royal made me love Persona 5 even more than I originally had. There's a bigger gap between my like of Persona 4 and Persona 5 now. Um, 
first of all, Persona 5 The Royal is still definitely my favorite Persona game, for sure. Uh, I do... It's so hard. Because, like, I do think... When I was, like, halfway through Persona 3... I really... I was really into the story, and I was really liking it. And I remember there was a time in this playthrough for, like, ten minutes I just talked about how the storyline was going. Persona 3's story feels a lot more streamlined than Persona 4 and 5's. Persona 4 and 5 always felt a lot more like it was focused on, like, a bunch of smaller individual stories, which were based on each deadline, that all linked to- were all pulled together by a common thread at the end of the game, like with Izanami and Yaldabaoth. Persona 3 didn't do that. Persona 3 just had one consistent storyline throughout the whole thing. However, I feel like at times it helped it, and at times it hurt it. Like, looking back at the early game of Persona 3, I feel like if I played Persona 3 again, I'd be pretty bored in the early game, because it's really just like, get through the months, fight the boss, have a couple of cutscenes, get through the months, fight the boss, have a couple of cutscenes, and that was pretty much it. My main, my main issue, at the end of the day, with Persona 3, my biggest issue is that the characters all just feel so weak compared to 4 and 5. They're just like, I'm, this cast was, not just the cast, but also the social links. Just, I feel like there are so, so fewer characters that I cared about and that the game really pulled me into and got me invested in compared to 4 and 5. Like, in general. Not just the main cast. I'm not just talking about the C's group. I'm talking about the social links at whole, at large. Because, like, I'm trying to think like, the only social links that I really enjoyed that really got my attention in this game were Mamoru. Uh, let me think. Mamoru. Tanaka's pretty good, but he... I would never put Tanaka super high in my rankings, but he was good. Hutatsu's really good. Akinari was good. Um, I know there was one other I really liked. What was the other social link I really liked? Who am I thinking of? Nozomi was pretty good, but again, he wouldn't be super high on my rankings. I know there was one other that I was really a fan of, and I can't think of the name at the moment, or at least I think there was. I must not like the character that much if I can't think of it. Am I just thinking of Mamoru? Did I think of Mamoru twice? Not Maya. Maya is the worst. Maya is like the third worst character in the franchise. Whatever. The point is, is that there aren't a whole lot of characters in this game that really gripped me and got my attention. And, again, for people who have watched me... No, I'm definitely not Maiko. Maiko was fine. But, um... I've gone over this plenty of times in almost every single game I ever played. Mamoru is Kendo Team Guy. Oh, no, Kazushi? Nah, not him. He was also good, but he wasn't super up there for me. Neither was Kenji. Ah, whatever. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um... I've gone on record saying this multiple times about games and anime in general. The most important thing to me is the characters. And I've, I've also always said a bad story can be held up by good characters, but bad characters can, like, not hold up a bad story, obviously, and they can even ruin a good story. So, to miss on the characters is the biggest whiff that you can do, pretty much. Especially for Persona, because the social link aspect and hanging out with characters and all, that's what I love the absolute most about Persona 4 and 5. It is my favorite part, is doing, this, is doing the confidant social links, growing with the characters, see them do stuff, etc, etc. It's my absolute favorite part, by far. Um, Persona 3 really falls flat, and I understand Persona 3 is the first game with social links in it, and whatnot, so you know, they were trying it out, and they got better. 4 and 5 do way better with social links and confidants in general, I think. Especially with the main group. Uh, and Persona 3 fell flat on it, which makes me like it less, in general. So, uh, from a character perspective, Persona 3 is my least favorite, for sure. 4 and 5 I definitely enjoy more in terms of characters by a great deal. 5 than 4 than 3. In terms of gameplay and actually being a game, obviously I have the party control mod, but Portable has party control, so I'm just gonna... I'm just, my review of this game is under the assumption that you can control your characters. I'm not going to take into account the fact that originally when the game was made, you couldn't do that. In terms of gameplay, I feel like Persona 3 does much better than Persona 4 because, and Michael actually finished Persona 4 recently and talked on Twitter, and he summed it up 
really well that really helped me realize like you know what that is the problem is in persona 4 first of all the level scaling is trash the level scaling in persona 4 is absolute garbage it's way better in 3 and in 5 like absolutely Four, with the way that they have randomized dungeons and also the dungeons are broken up, it felt more fulfilling and more, like, enjoyable gameplay-wise to be going through Tartarus than it did to go through the dungeons in Persona 4. Persona 4 was, uh... Persona 4, like, doing the dungeon that was only, like, 9 to 11 floors and then being done with it, and then with the horrible level scaling and having to grind to meet up with that level scaling was terrible. I never had that problem in Persona 3. That made Persona 3 gameplay-wise a lot better to me than Persona 4 was. Uh, so, I mean, that's the characters, the gameplay. So, lastly, I guess the only thing really left to talk about is the story. I, I have nothing against people that like the ending of Persona 3. If, if that's your jam, I'm glad. I'm glad that you enjoyed it and it was something that you liked. It's not my jam. It's really just what they do at the end of Persona 3. I understand it's the theme of the game or whatever, but it's really just not what I look for in media, pretty much. I, I've gone on record numerous times, long before I played this game, that I don't like it when games end on a really sad note. Uh, I much prefer games... Games don't have to be... 100% like, oh, happy, everything is perfect. A good example is, uh, spoilers for Tales of Zillia. A good example is Tales of Zillia. Tales of Zillia ends on an insanely bittersweet note, and Tales of Zillia is, like, my favorite game of all time, probably. The only contender it has is Xenoblade Chronicles, and I still, like, for me personally, I have a very personal attachment to Tales of Zillia, so it's probably still my favorite game ever. Tales of Zillia has an insanely bittersweet ending, where everyone is, everyone lives at the end, Everyone's happy, everyone, not happy necessarily, but everyone like gets to move on with their lives and continue forward and try and bring the world to a better place and everything. But the two main characters, Jude and Mila, who were obviously in love with each other and wanted to be together at the end of the game, they get separated and they don't get to be together at the end of the game. Very bittersweet, You, but you still have that sense of like happiness and like, oh, they're both alive, maybe they can meet again someday or something like that. And then Zillia has a sequel where they do meet again, but... I don't want to talk about Zillia 2 because I have problems with Zillia 2 that it doesn't focus enough on the original cast and they don't really address if Mila and Jude get to be together or not. But, um... So, like, a bittersweet thing I could be down for. Something like that. But to have an ending that's just, like... Not only is so incredibly, like, sadness because your main character dies like Minato did, but also... I feel like I would feel better about Minato dying if... I liked the final scene more. I really feel like the... I was... They got me really excited. They got me really pumped when... Aka, like, basically, when Akihiko grabbed Junpei's shoulders, I was like, yo, they remember. They're all gonna get together. They're gonna have this last moment together. And I was hyped, and I was ready for that. And then they just, like, ripped it away. Not only did they rip it away at the end because Minato is dead, but they... didn't even have a scene of them... of all the other characters getting together. I think I would have much preferred it. I still wouldn't have been happy, necessarily, but I would have much preferred it if Minato, like, faded away in Igus' lap, and then all the characters came together and were like, we remember and we're all friends and all that, and then they all came to the realization that Minato was dead. I just feel like it was a really, like, it was just a stunted ending. It's kind of like when Shinji died, where Shinji just died suddenly, and I felt like, dude, they could have done so much more, but they just didn't for some reason. They kind of did that at the ending with me. They could have done so much more with the characters all coming together and and whatnot. And, like, maybe with them going onwards. And maybe the answer does something like that. Maybe the answer will make me feel differently. I'll have to play the answer and find out, which I will be playing the answer. So I'll, I'll play the answer and see what happens there. But that's really how I feel, basically. It's just that, like, the ending just feels so stilted. And so, like... Just, like, there should have been more to, like... I don't know. Something more to make me feel more satisfied, even w even if they still had Minato die. I just don't feel satisfied by the ending. Basically. And before anyone on YouTube or something else is just like, Oh, well, it's death. So, like, maybe the point is that you're not supposed to feel satisfied. It, you're welcome to think that, but uh, again, we're just going to get back to the exact same thing I've been saying. In that I don't care if they're matching the themes or if that's what they were aiming to do. That doesn't mean I like it. So, even if they were like, oh yeah, we tried to make it feel like you were unsatisfied at the end. I don't like
like that in games. I want to feel satisfied when I finish playing a game or when I finish watching an anime or something. So if you like it, that's fun. I'm, I'm glad that you got some enjoyment out of it, even though I didn't. That makes it sound like I didn't have any fun playing Persona 3. I did enjoy Persona 3, and I do like this game. I'm just trying to explain why I'm not a fan of the ending and why that kind of brings down the game in general for me overall. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't really have much else to say without playing the answer. Persona 3 is good. I think as an actual, like, full game, I enjoy it more than 4. At least a little bit. But I definitely like 5 a lot more than 3 and 4. For sure. I am 5 is, like, a good jump ahead of 3 and 4 for me, personally. There's like, there's like an air gap in between them. Uh, I don't really think there's anything else I want to say. We do still need to load the save state to see that bad ending. I said I'd do that. But yeah. Things I thought Persona 3 did really well. Um, it's fun. The, the setting, like of the dark hour and... The overarching story all linking together is done really well. I did, like, the middle of the game, really. I was really invested in the story and everything. And I wasn't uninvested at the end. I just, like... I don't know. I feel like my expectations by the middle of the game... I kind of, like, the expectations I had there for how much I was enjoying it... I didn't have that same level of enjoyment in the end. So I kind of brought it all down for me in general... Because I'm, I'm just not a big fan of how it all ended up capping off. I was really disappointed in Strega. Strega didn't have near as much depth. Uh, the majority of my complaints come down to that the characters just did not have enough depth or enough focus at all. And they fixed that in 4 and 5. 4 and 5 do far better. Like, a lot of times when I did social link ranks in this game, they were done in like an instant. I was like, wow, that was really short. Uh, so they just didn't really build the characters much. They didn't build the villains very much. Like, Ikitsutsuki came out of nowhere as being a villain, even though it was obvious from the very get-go. It was random as heck. Strega, I feel like, was greatly wasted in general. Um, Koromaru was great. I love Koromaru. I really like Akihiko and Mitsuru, but again, we run into the problem of, like, I feel like they weren't used. They, they did have their moments, but they just didn't have enough, I guess. They never really... I think that one thing that Persona 3 did wrong that 4 and 5 have done better is that they gave me too many of the main characters right out the gate. And they didn't, like, build them up. Because, like, I remember when Junpei joined, he just showed up one night and it was like, hey, dude, I have a Persona. And I was like, oh, that's wild. You're, you're just here now, I guess, right? And then with Fuka, they were like, oh, we gotta find this girl. And then we just found her. It's like, well, she's in the team now. That's pretty neat. They just never really did anything to, like, build up the characters or really get me invested in them in general. And that kind of made the rest of the game... It made it hard for me to be really invested in everything that was going on in general. And really, uh... Really, uh, took away from the game. But, uh... Overall, the storyline was really well done. I do think I prefer the way 4 and 5 do it, where it's more, like, small, character-driven. Because, like I was saying earlier, like, every... Pretty much every deadline in 4 and 5 focuses on one or two characters and works a lot on like building a small story around that character and then at the end they tie all of the little stories that happen into one i prefer that style as opposed to the way they do it in three threes is still really good but after finishing three and after playing four and five i think i pref prefer the way they do the story in four and five that being said, I do think the story in 3 is probably better than 4. I remember being very underwhelmed in 4 with Adachi being the villain and all that, and, uh, etc. I like the story the best in 5, obviously. Uh, I really do just, like... You can be like, oh, you just love Persona 5 as much as you want, but I really do feel like Persona 5 just does basically every aspect of the, the style better than... 3 and 4. I feel like Persona 5 just does everything better, which is good because when you're releasing games, you want the most recent game to do everything better. That's kind of the hope is that it gets better with each installment. And I feel like Persona 3 to 4, maybe not everything was done better. Some things were done better. Some things weren't. 
I've also been told that 3 and 4 came out within like two years of each other, so that explains a lot, that they were basically back to back. But uh, 5 really, I feel like, built upon everything 3 and 4 try and do in a much better way. And I hope, I hope Persona 6 does even better. I would be shocked if they did because 5 is fantastic. But like, 6 would be great. But uh, Persona 3, overall the storyline was good. It was a good storyline. I really loved the whole the shadows come together and then Ryoji was like death who was sitting inside you the entire time, like, growing and subconsciously bringing you to the shadows. And then the whole Nyx plotline is really good. Um, I liked I liked the way they beat Nyx and all that, where, like, the power of your bonds come together and you seal Nyx away. I just don't like Minato dying. It's just a personal thing. It's just feels like... Anytime I get to the end of something and, like, a main, char like a main character I really like dies at the very end, or, like, my character dies at the very end, I basically feel like I've wasted my time. Because, like, you know, I got invested, and I want to see good things happen to the characters by the end. And then it doesn't, and I'm just like, that really sucks. I didn't like that. I would have preferred if, you know, all of the struggling I went through was worth something in the end. But, uh, yeah. Gameplay was pretty good. I don't really have much else to say. The social links that were good, were good. Mitsuru's social link was really good. Uh, I didn't like that, like, Mitsuru and I guess you have to wait so insanely long. Like, literally the last two months of the game to be able to hang out with them. That's pretty, that's pretty lame. But, uh, the social links that were good were really good, you know? I just don't really have much else to say. Yeah, I think I think I'm done. What are we at on time? Four hours and fifteen minutes. Music, music's good. It's Persona. Uh, I think I probably like Persona 3's track more than fours, but five is still definitely my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the dating system in Persona 3 is trash. I thought that went without saying. I didn't say anything about the dating system because it's garbage, and they immediately fixed it in 4, like they should have. The dating system is bad, not getting to choose who you date. Also, like, I don't like the connotations of when you hang out with a girl, if they get to a point, like, where if you hang out with another girl, they get jealous. That's just, like, that's just a bad thing to, like, exist in general, you know? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I guess one other thing is, uh, story, like, the personas evolving through story-related means. I don't think it's bad. I do prefer it being based on the social link instead. I, like, I really love the confidant and social link system. I really, really do. It's, as I've said, it's my favorite part of Persona 5 and 4, is the way that the confidant system works. So, I much prefer the fusions be or the evolved personas being based off of the social links however that you know them evolving through story stuff was pretty cool too it was nice but at the same time a lot of the characters not having social links at all like akihiko and i think did mitsuru's persona oh my goodness in my throat did mitsuru's persona evolve before i even got her social link i think i don't remember but like because the characters i felt so unattached to them them having those moments where they had their personas evolves i was like oh that's pretty neat but I just didn't... It mainly, at the end of the day, it all comes back to the game did a bad job of getting me really invested in the characters. Because even the characters I really liked, like Mitsuru and Akihiko and Shinji, I just, like, I wasn't... Like, when Shinji died, I Shinji was the character I was most invested in going in. But when he died, I was just like, eh. Kinda. So, I much prefer the way it is in 4 and 5, and I'm sure that's how it's going to be going into 6, so it's not like I have to make a case for it or anything. But, you know. Oh, something really cool Persona 3 does that the other two games don't do is uh, fusion spells are really awesome. I'd like to see those again in Persona 6. That's really sick. Having two specific Personas and they do a combo move, that's really nice. I really like that. And then requests. Requests are really cool as long as none of the requests are gated out by NG+, plus or needing a uh, social link to be maxed out. That's pretty lame. But other than that, requests were really nice. It was a nice little thing to add to the game to give me uh, give me something neat to do. Really, really cool. But, uh, yeah. All in all,
in all, Persona 3 is still a really good game. I really enjoyed it. The characters that I did like, I really liked them. The story was still good. I just wasn't a big fan of the conclusion of the story. And also, it drags on in the beginning, kind of. It takes a while to get going. Which isn't really a big deal when you're first playing the game. I imagine if I do a second playthrough, like when I play Persona 3 Portable, because I will play that eventually. I imagine a second playthrough, it'll start to feel like it drags a bit more. But uh, overall, the storyline is still really good. I'm just personally not a big fan of the, end of the ending. And... Uh, but the story as a whole was still pretty good. The characters that were good were good. I liked them. Gameplay was fun, etc. You know, it's a Persona game. It's still good. I do feel like it being kind of old kind of uh, hurts it a bit. Because it is like the oldest modern Persona game. And also it was the first one. So they were trying stuff and trying to get stuff together and all that. But, you know, that's just how it goes. Rank it out of 10. Uh, I think... When I finished Persona 4 Golden, I gave Persona 4 like a 9, and then I gave Pers the original Persona 5 like a 9.5 or something like that, or a 9. I gave them like similar scores. New scoring for all the Persona games. And my opinion on Persona 3 might change in a few months. The more and more I do YouTube and rank videos, or Twitch and play, do playthroughs and finish them at the end, the more and more I realize that my opinion of a game is never really solidified until a couple of months after I've finished it. Because I have to have time to sit on it and think back on it and maybe play it a second time to really nail down exactly how I feel about it. So this might change later, but this is how 4 has changed for me. 4? I would give 4, uh, Persona 4, like a... I want to say 7.5, but that feels too low. Because it is still a Persona game, and I love Yosuke and Kanji. But I'm going to say Persona 4 is like a 7.5, maybe an 8 out of 10 game. Persona 3 is like one step above that. So Persona 3 is like an 8, 8.5, something like that. Persona 5 The Royal is a 9.5. There's like... Almost nothing I could ask for to be better in Persona 5 The Royal, other than, as I mentioned, I wasn't a big fan of how they changed the ending of Persona 5 The Royal from the original Persona 5, like the final cutscenes. Uh, so... I do even have problems with Persona 5. For anyone watching this who's just like, this guy just loves Persona 5 and wants every Persona game to be exactly like it. That's not true. Persona 5 The Royal also made some mistakes that I pointed out in that playthrough. But I, I think I'd probably give 4 like 7.5, I'd give 3 an 8, and then I'd give Royal like a 9.5. Because I do think the Royal is just like a big step above 3 and 4, personally for me. But I do, as an overall game, I do like 3 more. I just really like the cast of 4 a lot more, because I feel like 4 is when they kind of got, they kind of started to get into their swing of like, hey, we know how to make characters like really appealing to you and get you invested in them so that you actually like care about what's going on three really suffered in that respect for me and again as i've mentioned numerous times in numerous playthroughs the characters are the most important thing to me yeah it was another thing that i complained about in uh, persona 5 the royal is that kasumi was like they they should have brought kasumi in at the absolute latest she should have joined in shido palace in shido's palace they kept her way too out of the original storyline of Persona 5 and just threw her in way too much at the end. Um, I Go watch my Persona 5 The Royal playthrough. I had complaints about Persona 5 through it. If anyone is watching this and didn't watch me play Persona 5 and they're thinking like, man, you must have just praised Persona 5 non-stop throughout the entire playthrough. Not true. I don't think I've ever played a game where I haven't had some kind of complaint because no game is perfect. I'm trying to think of what complaints I had about Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, but for the life of me, I cannot think of it. I'm sure Persona 5, or not Persona, I'm sure that Xenoblade did something that I was like, mm, I don't know about that, Chief, but I just can't remember it off the top of my head. Eh, whatever. No, the time trials in uh, Xenoblade were good. Uh... Yeah. I think I've rambled enough. At the end of the day... Persona 3 is a good game. I just want to make that clear. Because no matter what I say, whether I'm overly critical or overly praising, someone always shows up and says like, oh, so you just hate the game. Persona 3 is a good game. I had a good time playing it. I look forward to playing the answer and seeing what the answer has going for it.
But I, I mean, I've talked about this recently. Whenever I like try and talk about how I feel about something, I always feel like whenever I say I really like something, I feel like I have to point out the flaws of it more than anything to explain why I don't just think it's the best. But uh, yeah, 